Welcome to this video. Today, you're going to learn how to use later and after. This is a question that a student submitted and it's a great question. I see mistakes with these, but it's a really easy way to remember how to use them. So I'm happy to share that with you today. Of course, I'm Jennifer from jforestenglish.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you feel confident speaking English in public so you can take your career and your life to the next level. Now, before we go any further, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. Now, let's dive in with this video. Let's talk about the difference between later and after. Later is most commonly used as an adverb, and it means at a time in the future. It's not a specific time. For example, I could say, I'll wash the dishes. Now, this is just a statement about something I'm going to do. You already know it's in the future because I used will, all, I'll wash the dishes. So if you'd like to add a time reference, when will you wash the dishes, you can choose later and you can say, I'll wash the dishes later. But what does later mean? Does it really tell the person when you'll wash the dishes? Not really, because it's not a specific time reference. All we know is that you're not going to do it right now, and you'll do it at some point in the future. I'll wash the dishes later. Now, after is most commonly used as a preposition. We use after to show the sequence of events. And those sequence of events can be in terms of time, in terms of place, or in terms of order. But it is commonly used in terms of time. Sequence of events in time. Which means one event is going to happen later than another event. So really, it has that same meaning as later in the sense that it's a time in the future. So what's different about them? Well, it's really just the sentence structure and how you use them because after is a preposition. So I could say, I'll wash the dishes after something else. That's the key. We generally use after and then something else because it shows the relationship between two things. So wash the dishes, something else. What's the order of them? Which one comes first? That's how we use after. So I could say, I'll wash the dishes after I watch the movie. So I have wash dishes, watch movie but I don't know the order. And that's what after helps us do, show the order. And in this case, it's order in time. I'll wash the dishes after I watch the movie. Now notice how I used a full clause, a full sentence with a subject, a verb, and an object. I'll wash the dishes after I watch the movie, a full clause. We don't need to do that. You can simply have a noun as well. So it could be two objects, just two nouns rather than two actions. So I could say, I'll wash the dishes after the movie, after the movie, okay? So you don't have to use a full clause and it's probably very common for native speakers to just use the object and not include the action. I'll wash the dishes after the movie. Now here's the mistake I see students make. They say something like, I'll wash the dishes later the movie. So they use later and then they include a something, a noun, or even a clause. You can't do that. You can't say, I'll wash the dishes later the movie. Generally, we use later, period. I'll wash the dishes later, and that's it. So if you want to specify an action or a thing that comes next, you use after, and then you can specify a noun or an action. I'll wash the dishes 
after the movie. That's correct. Now, one final thing you can do with after is you can leave out the action or the noun. So just like I'll say, I'll wash the dishes later, period, you can do the same thing with after. I'll wash the dishes after, period. We do this when the context is obvious. So let's say you and your friend just talked about watching a movie. You're sitting on the couch. The, you have the remote in your hand. It's obvious. So when you say, oh, I'll wash the dishes after, your friend knows that it's after the movie. It's obvious based on context. So if it's obvious based on context, grammatically, you can leave it out. And then you will have after and just a period. You don't have to specify the action or the noun. So just remember, probably the most important thing to remember is that you can't say later the movie. You can't say that. That's the most common mistake that I see. So now you know how to use later and after. So it's your turn to practice. I want you to leave two examples in the comments below practicing your new vocabulary. And if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. And if you're a busy professional who's serious about improving your English so you can take your career and your life to the next level, then I want you to go to my website, j4isenglish.com. There you'll find a free case study. In this case study, you'll learn how to feel confident speaking English in public so you can impress your boss and your clients with your message in only 30 days. Simply click the button, enter your name and email, and you'll get instant access to the case study. And until next time, happy studying. I'll teach you a little bonus expression with later. I'm sure you probably know it already, but it's very common just to say, see you later, see you later. Remember, because it's an unspecified time in the future, see you later. But I could also say something like, see you after the movie, see you after the movie, see you later. So there's a couple little bonus expressions for you and I'll see you in my next video, bye.